FBI investigators are searching the home of the former Vice President Mike Pence. That's in Carmel, Indiana. We're told one of Pence's private lawyers is there as the FBI searches the Pence house. We also know this search was coming, and that Pence lawyers have been going back and forth with the government on just when and just how it would happen. So let's talk about what's happening here and then some other big legal developments for Mike Pence with me to share their reporting and their insights. CNN's Evan Perez, the former federal prosecutor, Elliot Williams, and CNN's Paula Reed. Uh, this was negotiated. Right. This is not a warrant at the Pence house, uh, but still the FBI wants to go in. The vice president, they found some classified documents here. They want to now go through the house to see if anything else. To, to see if there's anything else. And, you know, in the case of the, 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 vice pre the former vice president, uh, he and his legal team uh, have been trying to bend over backwards to make sure that the FBI can come in, do this search, and hopefully find nothing else. Uh, and, and then perhaps he can then move on to his uh, political uh, <coughs> duties that he wants. You know, he has plans to go to Iowa and so on. So uh, this is the, the best way for him to get this over with as soon as possible. Uh, you will note right now this is still being handled by the Justice Department. It's being handled by the FBI, not by a special counsel. They're doing everything they can to avoid that. We also expect that in the next uh, few days we're going to see another search of Pence's think tank office. Uh, it's a private office that's right across the street from the FBI building downtown Washington. So again, if, if, if everything goes as, as they hope it does, then uh, this should be wrapped up, they believe, very, very soon, and uh, they can move on with Mike Pence's political plan. Right. So, But you, you're looking to see if there are any documents, and we should be clear, when documents were found at Mar-a-Lago, and then when the president, Joe Biden, found documents, documents found his office, Mike Pence said, I don't have any, I didn't take any, I wouldn't do that. And then it turns out <laughs> he did have some. Uh, he turned out he did have some. Uh, so the question is, number one, you want to check the home, mm -hmm. the office, you want to make sure there are no more classified documents in places they simply do not belong. But then they also have to do the work of how did they get there, right? Interviews with how did they get there? Was it, just in, was it just inadvertent? Was there any nefarious intent? Exactly. They're currently conducting a review, which is initially what they did in the Biden case as well, to just look at, you know, how did this happen exactly? Was this inadvertent? Was this just part of the chaos of the final days of an administration? Are there true questions of criminality here? Look, best case for him is they find no more documents at the home, no more documents at the office. If that's the case, then it is likely that there probably won't be a full-blown criminal investigation here. But it's not just what goes on at the Justice Department. It's also the court of public opinion. And he's trying to draw a contrast uh, with former President Trump, of course, by being incredibly cooperative with the FBI, but also in moving quickly, right? One of the problems for President Biden is that it took them weeks and weeks to conduct their own searches in other residences. They weren't always being completely transparent with the Justice Department. And that, in addition to the fact that he is, of course, the sitting president, is part of how he got a special counsel. So definitely learning from other people's mistakes here. And as Evan noted, just trying to move this along as fast as possible so he can potentially move forward with a campaign. So if this is just sloppy, inexcusable, but if it's yeah. just sloppy, it's done with. Done with. Now, you know, to pick up on Paul's really important point here, Mike, because this is now in the world of practical, not legal, Mike Pence had the benefit of how is it, how much is it now, months of the mishandling in different ways of both former President Trump and President Biden. Now, look, these are very different circumstances, and I do not mean to equate the two. But the simple fact is he saw a roadmap for how to behave, and the way you behave is you let them in and comply with everything. Right. Now, look, most instances of documents getting ending up in the wrong place are inadvertent, and it's not a crime. If their evidence does emerge that it is, of course, he or anyone else around him ought to be and can be prosecuted, but we just don't see that right now. So, so let's move. We'll let the search play out, and we'll see what happens in the next few days. We'll cover the results of the search. Let's move on to what I would say is a much bigger issue uh, for the former vice president, a subpoena from the special counsel, Jack Smith, who's investigating Donald Trump, investigating efforts to overturn the election, investigating what happened on January 6th, investigating whether there was a deliberate attempt to disrupt a government proceeding, to defraud the United States, if you will. He wants the former vice president to come into a grand jury and to give testimony and to turn over documents. Will the special counsel ever get that testimony or will this be an executive privilege issue? He's not going to get what he wants. Now, look, Mike Pence has probably three options, either comply in full, fight it in court, or just blow the whole thing off. Now, look, he's not going to blow the whole thing off. And I think what, what ends up happening is this gets tied up in litigation because fairly some conversations he had with the president are going to be protected by privilege. He can assert it. The former president possibly can. Now, the question is, what are the gray area circumstances where it's not a protected conversation, maybe even discussing unlawful conduct, and where can he be forced to talk about it? 
courts can figure that out. Right. You and I can't, and so maybe we'll... And he made it a lot easier by writing about this right. yes. in his memoir, right? He really opened the door. You can't go before a grand jury and say, sorry, I can't talk about it. It's privilege, but you can read all about it in my book. And That's on, not going to work. And in the news media, too. Like, he's yeah. given interviews yeah. repeatedly. Right, so let me read a little bit from the book. Uh, if it gives you the power, Trump asked, why would you oppose it, I told. I told him, as I had many times, that I didn't believe I possessed that power under the Constitution. You're too honest, he chided. That would be Donald Trump. Hundreds of thousands are going to hate your guts. People are going to think you're stupid. So the, the question is, the special counsel and his team understand the privilege issues here. He does, yeah. um, So what do they want from Mike Pence in the sense that maybe they don't want to ask him what exactly did the president say to you, at least beyond what's in your book, right? You wrote what you, do you believe, is Mr. Vice President, is what's in your book truthful? You're done there. But were you in the room certain times? Did you hear the president? Was the president ever told, sir, if we do that, it's illegal? Is that what they're looking for? Yeah, look, they, they are, you have some aggressive people at the Justice Department who are going to use this little crack in the door, and they're going to try to go a lot more further into the room here. And they want to, they want to get into that room. They want him to go into the, into the Oval Office for the conversations in December, where Trump first raises uh, the, the, the issue of, of challenging the election. Mike Pence talks about that in the book. He talks about uh, those key meetings at the Oval Office in early January, where, my, where John Eastman, the, the, the lawyer who came up with this idea of, 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 of Pence just throwing out the election results and, and, and you know, essentially impeding the transfer of power, those key meetings are things that the Justice Department wants a lot more detail of. Now, the first, I, you know, I think the first thing you're going to have is, is Mike Pence is going to comply with the subpoena. He's been negotiating for, for months. And they have at least a first pass where they talk about the things that are in the book already. Right. And then the Justice Department can look and say, well, we want more than that. And you've already kind of opened the door. And that's where Donald Trump and his legal team have the opportunity to come in and fight. And, and I think, you know, certainly the Justice Department and, and Pence's team believe that Donald Trump will do that eventually and take it all the way to the Supreme Court. So put this in a context, Elliot. You have the special counsel demanding testimony and documents through the power of a subpoena, that's a big deal, to the former Vice President of the United States. Also a subpoena to the former National Security Advisor of the United States. Two people who essentially have Oval Office access, who are in the West Wing, who are subject to many conversations with Donald Trump and with all the people trying to help Donald Trump or stop Donald Trump from trying to steal the election. What does it tell you that the special counsel is taking that step? Uh, it seems to me it's like uh, Lawrence Walsh, the special prosecutor back in the Iran-Contra days or Watergate days, it, to go after the former vice president and the national security advisor, you're way up here. Yes, it's you're ratcheting things up significantly. It's that most, you know, many interactions with law enforcement can be simple conversations. Subpoenas are inherently more adversarial and come with the risk of, of going to jail if you don't comply. So it is an incredibly big deal, and I think we see these big deals all the time now in this world. <laughs> They're almost desensitized to it, but this is, this is quite profound. It is, and it completely contradicts what you'll hear from the president's legal team right now, which is, look, this is all wrapping up. Nothing's going to come of it. But clearly, this is a very active and ongoing investigation, though it does appear, based on the profiles of some of these subpoenas, the people that they're targeting, this could be maybe in, in the final stage. But this is a very active, ongoing investigation, despite what the former president's lawyers may wish or hope. Yep, yep. And, and so if you're Mike Pence, if you're Mike Pence, he told Bob Coster of CBS News that long ago, oh, the truth is, I think we've got time. People around America know the Pences. We're going to take the opportunity of time. So he thinks he has maybe a couple more months than a Nikki Haley or somebody who might be a little less known nationally to get into the race for president. But she gets in next week. Trump's already in. Others are thinking about it. If you're talking about clear up the classified document question and then the Trump investigations to which Pence is now, at least the special counsel, wants him as a witness, how long? That's a great question because, I mean, I think the <laughs> clock is ticking for the Justice Department. If they're going to do this and if you're going to bring charges against anyone, uh, you know, in a politically charged case, I mean, you've got to start doing something soon you're talking about a trial going into next year, uh, you know, so there, are, there is a clock ticking. And, and by the way, you know, not only Mike Pence, but, you know, you also have uh, Mark Meadows out there. There is a possibility here that the Justice Department wants to try to make sure they, they start this process because they know there could be litigation and that could be part of the process here. I'll close it this way. Is this a common sense, common decency clock or is there a calendar at the Justice Department that says this is an active wow. campaign, you have to make these decisions by this date? I, I think it's an excellent question, John, because look, the nice thing about a special counsel is that it transcends um, presidential administrations and can last indefinitely if that's the case. Look, we live in the real world and there's a presidential election coming up. Everything is different in America in a presidential election and I think they know they've got to get it done by then. Right. Which adds urgency to the questions. Does Pence fight the subpoena? How long does that go on? A lot to cover in the days and weeks ahead.